and we can help read through all those tables. Okay, so if you look at the if you look at the window layout in the manual, page 27, 28, I believe. If Jerry was working up to his window, we're going to pretend that the window starts right in the middle of that panel, or somewhere in the middle of that panel, that first short panel. So you build up close to the window, put your last panel in that you can, full panel, stop, and then cut your panels for underneath. We pre-cut them here just to save time. But you, oh, you're going to show cut? Okay. So he didn't pre-cut them. Cut your plastic rails short. So you take your, your plastic rails and just cut them an inch or so short. So they're just out of the way and you don't have to worry about running into them. And then what you do is you set up, set up your panel so they're just taller than what the bottom of your opening would, where it would land. build all the way through. A lot of times you'll have some marks down on the footing or in the C-channel for where your opening is, so just make sure to build just past it. Then you would stop and go ahead and put in a full height stud. And then we have one of the components that we didn't talk about yet but you can see it in the drawing is what we call a shutoff stud. And, and when we figure out materials for a project, alongside all of your openings, windows and doors, we're going to figure shutoff stud. What that shutoff stud is, it's basically one of our regular studs, but it doesn't have the punches, so the concrete can't flow through it. It's just solid plastic. That keeps concrete from coming into contact with your wood. So that's one way, the reason why that was developed was to keep, try to be able to purchase white lumber instead of treated lumber, because whenever we can get treated lumber out of a project, we'd like to do that. Uh, it's heavy, it's more expensive, it warps, you know, all those things. Um, so as long as we can keep concrete from being in contact with it, then no problem using the white lumber. Uh, actually, I'll talk about it while we do it because we're really running, running way, way, way behind. Uh, so what Jerry did was he measured up to where his window should be and put a line with a level so it's nice and flat because you don't know if that footing is perfect at this point. So putting a nice level mark ensures that our window is going to go into place nice and plumb. And then he'll... He would hand cut that then with a handsaw, making sure to keep it nice and straight. But we'll just replace it with the right cut panels just to speed things up. And save on the mess that we have to vacuum up later. <laughs> you can cut panels, one of the best ways to cut the panels are is with it just a chop saw, like a sliding chop saw. Works really well. So we build underneath, and again on that last tall form, we, we made just made sure we were past the window opening, and then. Here's going to go ahead and put C-channel on top of the poly panels for the wood buck to rest on. And I'll talk real quick about the buck itself. We will usually promote just regular lumber for our bucks, but there are several different options. You can, there's plastic bucking options out there. That will all work with our form system. Uh, there's metal. Bucking options, of course, for the commercial world if needed. We promote 
regular traditional lumber because it's easily adjusted, it's easy to get, easy to work with. But some of our projects, customers just don't want any wood in their in their project or in their home. And that's no problem. We can there's other things we can do to not have wood there. Some of our customers will even use, which we stock, uh, like four by eight sheets of the trim board, the plastic trim board, like Versatex or, uh, oh, what's the company here? That's a more prevalent company in this neck of the woods, but Versatex is what we, we tend to handle. And you can cut those four by eight sheets. We carry it in different thicknesses, like one and a quarter thick or three quarter thick for bucking options. So you want to set, set the buck in place where it needs to be. And then you can measure on both sides of the opening. We pre-screwed that shut-off material right to the buck itself. So that's that plastic component. So that gives us a flange then. That, that uh, shut-off material, uh, we actually cut off one side of the flange before we send it out. So you can screw it right flush to your buck but then it'll accept the groove in our panel. On top, you see we stapled some tar paper down. That's what most of our guys will do so that they can not use treated lumber on the top as well. But in a real world situation, those two by fours that are on the bottom for the buck would usually be a treated lumber because concrete is going to fill up underneath that window and be touching that component. We use two by fours on the bottom so that there is an opening left so we can ensure that concrete fills underneath that opening. Otherwise, we could potentially create an air pocket in there and concrete won't fill all the way up underneath the window. And if we pour, we'll, we'll promote, if somebody's not utilizing a plasticized concrete with an additive to make it much more wet, then we'll usually promote about a six slump of concrete, which is a traditional mix. Add about a six slump, slump concrete, it'll allow the, con the concrete to come underneath that window and fill in just about perfect without it bubbling over too much. And on the first pass, if this was a, a project that we were going to pour, we'd probably pour our first lift about a foot above that opening, at least around the openings. And so that won't, by the time we come back 10, 15 minutes later, that first level would be hard enough to not bubble up underneath the window and, and come out. If all of a sudden a concrete truck comes and he's way too wet, it's at an eight slump concrete, can happen all the time of course, driver added too much water on the way to the job site, but you have to pour it in the wall, then you certainly could have some plywood ready just in case to screw to the bottom of the buck after you filled it in so that you could keep right on rolling. Then we build across the top. You can see Jerry's building one side, which is can happen quite often. Just build one side above that opening so that you have full access for installing the reinforcing that's needed above that opening. Because I may need what's called stirrups in that lintel which means that I have a, a bar close to the top of the wood and a bar at the top of the wall. And I need to connect those two bars with like a C shape or an S shape. That's called a stirrup. And a stirrup is required or needed when it's starting to get uh, to the point of, of engineering telling us that we're starting to get uh, quite, quite a large span opening and uh, what we need to do is really protect that concrete from wanting to sag. So if I connect that bottom bar and that top bar together, that means for that lintel to fail or crack or move on us, you would actually have to pull the rebar right out of the concrete. And if you can imagine, that would take a heck of a force. Great, Jerry just mentioned that this is a great place to use up your scrap. So you can stack up your pieces above an opening. 
leave them all stick up high, throw your level on there again, level from side to side panel, or snap a chalk line, and then cut them off. So there's a window. figure in shut off so if somebody doesn't want it you'll want to tell us because uh, then it would add a couple extra studs in place of the shut off yep then we'll go through a door basically the same just don't have the bottom to build through Any questions on bucking options or how that buck went together? You'll see there's 